Recently I finally decided on getting a print on my bass drum skin. I've held out until now because I work with a lot of groups and changing skins is just a lot of work. However one group is now doing quite well so I thought I'd take the plunge. As you can see I haven't gotten one yet, unless the band's name is Remo. The reason I haven't is because I found out the cost. So I thought I'd try to do something myself which would be a bit cheaper. I do have a photo printer, I thought it might be possible to print out the logo and maybe stick it on and blend it in somehow. But that was useless. Then I decided to go one dimension more and enlist the use of my 3D printer. Maybe a stencil or something that I can stick on like this. It works, but my brain didn't switch off until I had something better. Eventually snowballing into this. It's eye catching, it's easily changeable, looks great in pictures, and it doesn't have to be used for just a drum. It can be used for a picture promo prop. Picture promo prop. Picture promo prop. Picture promo prop, for example. Particularly at the end of a gig, if you want to get a shot with the crowd, you can just pull this off the drum and hold it up. Hopefully this is where I can insert a photo of me doing that. I'm sure probably some of you are thinking, but doesn't that cover the mic port hole thing? And yes, this one does. The mic can't fit around it. However, this depends on the logo type. This one in particular sticks out over the hole. But if I really wanted to, I could adjust these wires to pull it over to the side a bit and free up some space for the mic. But actually I've found that this kick sounds much better with the mic inside the drum, so in this case there's no issue. Anyway, I've given away the end result of the project, but if you want to see how I did it and how you can do it as well, whether you have a 3D printer or not, stick around. For anyone who's curious, Grand Theft Audio is a 9-piece band I'm a part of where we play the music from the game live, all the music from the best car radio stations in the game, and we have gameplay projected live throughout the show. It's pretty cool, you should check it out. The links are below. Everybody sing! So before I show you how I designed and built it, I did mention before that it's 3D printed, but before you switch off thinking that you're going to have to buy a 3D printer, don't worry, you don't need one. There is other ways of doing it. There are online services that you can send your model to, or even local shops. They're also not that expensive, well certainly cheaper than getting a bass drum skin printed. Alternatively, if you really don't want to do that, there is one other way it can be done, but I'll talk about that in a minute. For now I'm going to show you how to prep a logo to be printed by tracing it and turning it into a 3D model. This process could be more or less complex depending on your logo. It's also worth noting that it can be done in several different softwares. For this video anyway I'll be using a Mac with Adobe Illustrator and Blender. So first thing we're going to do to prep the logo is open it using Mac's inbuilt preview. And for this example I'm just going to use the black and white parts of the logo so I'm going to remove Vice City. I'll do that using just a simple square crop. Now the end goal is to just have the black shapes here. So to do that we want to remove any of the white parts from this image. The handy thing about preview is that it has this smart color selector which appears in this toolbar which opens when you use crop. So now using the smart selector I can click and drag on the color I want to remove. The more I drag away from the initial click position the more of a tolerance it has for selecting color that differs from the initial one. So in this case everything is white so it's pretty easy that it will just select all of the white around it. Then if we let go of the mouse it'll all be selected and I can just hit delete and it will remove that colour and change the image from whatever JPEG it is to a PNG file. Also you don't want to go too far otherwise it will select everything in the image. There is a part left over from the Vice City logo so I'll just remove that. Now you can see there's white parts still left over in the letters so we'll just rinse and repeat and remove them. There's probably a way to do this in Photoshop and even Illustrator for that matter that's likely quicker, easier and I'd say more accurate. However I think this little hack to do it in preview quickly is quite handy if you have a Mac. Next I'm going to open Adobe Illustrator and pull in the image. It comes in quite large for an A4 sheet so I'm just going to scale it down. If you haven't used Adobe Illustrator before you can do this by holding shift and dragging the corner. Holding shift will retain the initial shape of the image. Next I'm going to go over to properties and image trace. For this example I can keep the preset as default, however it might be worth changing this depending on your logo. For example the Vice City part of this logo has three colours, so pink, black and white, so I set it to the three colour preset. 
Then when we hit expand, it will trace the image and split it up into all of the individual components, which we can see if we go over into layers here. And there they are. Now finally, we're gonna save it as an SVG file. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. This is basically a file type that you can make as big or as small as possible and it will retain its quality. As opposed to, for example, taking a low quality image and stretching it over a large canvas, you'll eventually see the individual pixel squares. And then finally, to make it a 3D object, I'm gonna pull it into Blender. I'll just remove these elements from the general template. Go to File, Import, and grab our SVG. Now it's pulled in the logo, but it's quite small, so I'm just gonna zoom in here. And I've just realized that it still has the elements of white space, which I should have removed from Illustrator. I'm just gonna remove them here real quick. And there we have our logo. Now technically the object is still in two dimensions, so we have to extrude it into the third dimension. To do this, I can go to Object Data Properties, and under Geometry, I can set a value under Extrude. Whoops, that's a bit big. I'll just bring that down. That seems about right. So I'll just repeat this step for all the other parts. The objects have also come in quite small, so I'm gonna scale them up by quite a bit, actually. To do that, I can go to the X and Y scale here, and once again, repeat for all of the objects. So if it was to be exported as is, it would turn out something similar to the stencil-like shape I showed at the start, but that's not what I want as the light won't shine from behind it properly. So to get the proper light effect behind it, I'm gonna add a base. At print time, this will actually be white, and then the logo on top will be black. As I'm still somewhat of a Blender noob, I'm gonna do this just by creating a cube. So I'll just go to Add, Mesh, and Cube, and then I can set the scale over on the side to change the dimensions. I don't want the base to be perfectly square, so what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate this and have multiple rectangular shapes underneath it added together to make one base. All I have to do to make a copy is right click and duplicate, then I can move it along just the one axis, and as long as they're touching, it'll be regarded as one piece when it comes to printing. It looks a bit boxy, so I'm gonna round off the edges just to shape it up a bit nicer. To do this, I can select the object I wanna modify, then go up to edit mode up here, then if I click this vertical line here, that means I'll only be selecting the vertices of the object. That is, any lines that we can see. Then I can go to Edge and Bevel Edges. And now if I drag, you can see the shape form. Once I click with the rough shape, this menu will come up and I can fine tune the measurements. Now despite the fact it looks like a box already, I actually only want this to be the top plate. So I'm gonna reduce the size of these cubes on the Z axis and then move them so they're touching the logo. Now this is gonna be the top part of the box. I want to print it in separate parts so it doesn't take too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and print this now. I'm gonna export it as an STL file. This is basically a 3D model file. If you don't have a 3D printer and plan on sending it off somewhere to print for you, this is the file you'll want to send them. You should also include instructions of what size you want and any color requirements or changes. I'm gonna bring it into my own printing software, so feel free to use the video chapters to skip ahead if you're not gonna be doing this part. I'll import it into Cura, which is a slicing software. That is, it changes a 3D model file into instructions for a 3D printer. Now, once I've sliced it, we can view a preview of each layer that's gonna be printed. I need to check this because I need to know at what point should I swap over from the white filament to the black filament. This will be once the printer starts printing the letters as opposed to the base plate which as I can see is about layer 16 or 17. Now I can hit upload to print loaf, print loaf being the name of my printer, it's a long story, and then I'll set the name, upload, and immediately start the print job. The way my printer is configured, I can then view the progress and the controls in my browser, so I can open it up here. I then also have a webcam connected so I can see a real-time view of what's actually been printed. So here we can see the outline being set, and so on. Now that that's printing, I'm gonna move on to designing the next parts. That is the side edges and the back plate to hold the lights. To do this, I'm gonna duplicate the base plate and then make each of the objects bigger. This will start off the side edges, but I don't want it to be completely solid, so I'm gonna to need to cut out a lot of the middle. I can duplicate each of the objects. Let's start with this one. And then if I make it a slightly different size, so it will be the size of the part I want to remove, now, if I select the objects that I want to keep, I can go to the little spanner here, add modifier, select boolean, and now under object, if I choose another object which is touching this one, it will subtract one from the other. So in this case, I'll be subtracting the duplicate object I just made. Then I just have to hit this down arrow, apply. Now, if I delete that object, because it's not needed anymore, you can see it's hollowed out that cube now, or cuboid, leaving just an outer wall. Now I can just rinse and repeat for the rest. 
So I'll just fast forward through that. For the actual print that I've done, I've made a nice clean outer wall for the logo. However, for the purpose of getting this demonstration done quickly, I haven't removed everything from the inside. It takes a bit longer to get all of the parts, so I just left in these kind of struts in the middle. Now that leaves us with a top plate, walls around the side, and the last thing that's remaining is a back plate to hold the lights. But first... I chose these under cabinet lights because they have good spread and diffusion, especially because they'll be in such a small box. They actually come with a diffuser on the front, but you can take that off to get access to the LEDs directly. I did this for mine to make it as bright as possible. There's also four of them so they can be spread across the unit, covering any intricate parts that might need more light as well. I'm going to do the same subtracting method to make circular cutouts for the lights. Using my vernier calipers I just measured the outer diameter so I know how much I need to cut out from the bottom plate. Now I can add a cylinder and blender and if I hit the blue Z over here I can look straight onto that axis and now I can choose exactly where the lights are going to sit behind the logo. The lighting set I got has four lights, however I'm going to need one to sit behind the Vice City in my case so let's say for this demonstration I only have three lights. I did print out the base plate first specifically to test where best to hold the lights behind it. So if I was roughly guessing, I think it was about in these three positions. Once they're set, I just need to move them down on the z-axis so they're intersecting with the base plate. And then just like before, I can go to the blue spanner, add modifier, boolean, and then subtract away those cylinders from each of the parts of the base plate. Now finally, I can just remove these cylinders as they're not needed. If you hold shift and hit X, this is a quick way to delete any objects. And that's it. All we have to do is export the walls as a separate model and then the base plate as a separate model. However, depending on your printer, you can print them all at once. One more additional step that I added was just some holes that I could put fishing line through to attach it to the base drum. Now these can be drilled after it's printed anyway, I just thought I'd do it in the software to make it cleaner. To do it I took one of these cylinders and made the diameter a lot smaller, rotated it around the axis and then moved it to be intersecting with the wall and same as before, subtracted. I had four pairs of holes around the edges, I actually only ended up using three pairs in the end, but again this will depend on the shape of your logo where the best anchor points are. As you can see it's starting to look like the kind of box shape we want. Now on to the easier parts. Firstly waiting for the prints to finish, helped along with the magic of editing, then gluing the parts together and finally putting in the lights. Initially I had planned on adding some clips on the base plate to hold these on, but in fact at print time I got the measurements so correct I was able to just wedge them into the holes. So as you can see here I have three lights behind the main logo and then one covering the Vice City extra part. And as I mentioned before, I added in these holes for the fishing line. I've got three anchor points on this one, one at the top, one at the side and one at the bottom. And additionally, I also printed these little hooks just to hold them onto the bass drum lugs. And voila. And this is how quickly it can be set up. It's also worth noting on the Vice City part, I did three colors, white, black and pink to make this stand out even more. However, with the light behind it, it doesn't really make the pink as visible but it looks cool. And finally, I did mention before that there was a way to do this without 3D printing, and this is it. I know it's not quite the same, but something like this would include most of the parts that could be modified to get a similar effect. Without even needing some of the letters and symbols that come with it, you could get the silhouette of your logo by cutting it out of a piece of paper and sticking it on the front. I know it's not as cool, but it's probably a much easier option if you're not too fussed on the outcome. And that's it. This print in total took about 25 hours by the way. The filament cost is negligible, but the electricity cost on the other hand is a bit more notable. But it's still worth it for the result. I think it looks fantastic and stands out a lot. In fact, in future I plan to print a lot more. I might have some standard circular design with the lights in the back, and then I can swap out the top plates. This way I won't be spending loads of money on cabinet lighting and have a load of wire boxes sitting around the house. In fact, it could even have the potential to make a print for a specific event. For example, a personalised wedding design. Let's see where it goes. Be sure to like, subscribe, all of that stuff if you want to see any future updates I make to this. And if you decide to do it yourself, be sure to comment below and show how yours turned out. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next build.